Hey, what's up, welders? Welcome to another episode of Adventures in Welding. I'm Paul. Thanks for joining me. Today we're going to talk about um, a measuring tool that's more often seen on the machining side of the fabrication world than the welding side, but a tool that is nonetheless very useful. So let's pop her open here. And what we've got is a dial indicator with the dial indicator holder and a magnetic base. Now this particular one is from Grizzly Industrial. It is the G8, G9849 magnetic base dial indicator combo. And I purchased this full price from Amazon.com. So let's get it set up and then I'll show you its general uses and how we can use this in the welding world to be more precise in what we do. Okay, the dial indicator comes with a magnetic base that has one of these wonderful on-off setting things. I mean, look at that. That's tough. So, pardon me moving the camera around here. I'm trying to get you guys a good look. The way we install this is the base, or the, the upright rather, screws in here like this. And then the indicator screws on right here. At least I think that's the way it works. Yeah, just like that. And then this knurled nut. on the back. Alright, here we go with the camera moving again so you can get a better all-around look at what we've got going on here. We've got the base securely mounted here to the table. Then we have this adjustment which we can loosen up here which allows us to move this up and down and it also tightens and loosens this so that we're able to move this horizontal feature here, kind of like this. And then we got this one here, which we move all together like that. And the dial indicator is really a, a, a simple, simple tool. You set the dial for zero, and then things work on it, basically like that. All right, let's show you how this is traditionally used. All right, folks, this is one of the primary ways in which a dial indicator is used. It's used for checking to make sure that your stock is mounted squarely in a lathe, for instance. Now, as you can see, what we've done here is we've mounted the magnetic base to this nice piece of cast iron here. And we've lowered the contact point of the dial indicator to the top of the material. Now, one of the things we need to do here is just make sure we're about on center as we can possibly be okay then we loosen the face lock and we adjust the dial indicator so that the dial reads zero that's our zero point now as we rotate the material 
in the chuck, you can see just how out of round it really is. That's 20 thousandths, it's red high. There's our start point. So we're reading 21 thousandths out of round. Now in a four jaw chuck, you would individually adjust each of your jaws to knock that into place. In a three jaw chuck, you can just kind of lightly tap it. Of course, that was completely the wrong side. You want to do it from the lowest point, I guess. See, now our whole thing is only about five thousandths out. I'm no expert at this, but that's one of the main uses of the dial caliper in the machining world. Now, how can we use this in the welding world? Well, that's what we're going to hit on next. All right, guys, if you're like me, even if you're not like me, you probably have a little drill press vise that you use to hold things, small parts that you're going to be welding up. Here I have piece of 6061, it's about three quarter inch thick. And I can sit it in my drill press vise there and say that, you know, we're going to we're going to hold it there and we're going to weld another piece onto it. Well, then the question becomes, how do we make sure that we are square and parallel? Well, you can say, okay, my table is, is square and parallel. And you can even put a square on there. I don't know if you guys can see in there, but that reads out relatively square or flat. But that's flat with the world, and I eyeballed that. But is it square and flat with the table? That's another matter altogether. And if you're going to have something sitting here that needs to be welded to this and it needs to be parallel, then that's where you need to know if what you have is square to each other. And that's one of the places where you can use a tool like this dial caliper to find out. So let me spin around here and we'll get her set up and I'll show you one way to do all right, so we have our piece of material here in the vise, snug down, and we have our dial indicator set on there, and we zeroed it out. Now, the way that we can find out if this surface is parallel to this surface is to simply run the dial caliper along the top of the surface and it is going to show us the high and the low points then what you want to do is come in here and adjust just about half of your low point or your high point out. Readjust it and then go back in. Keep measuring it, keep taking out half of the high side and you will get to the point where this surface is perfectly parallel to that surface within a margin of error based on the caliper itself. So that's a brief explanation of how you can use this tool, this instrument, the dial caliper, in our welding world. You know, I bought this to use. I didn't buy it as a review. It wasn't given to me or anything like that. So just as a quick going over this, the magnet seems... 
sufficient. This is very nice, as is this. Now what you have here is very fine adjustment. You see how that moves the rod in and out. The dial caliper is no Starrett, but of course when you see the price I paid for this, $14.95 for the entire kit, don't expect a Starrett. Now these little bugs here are movable, so if you want to find the distance between two parts you can mark one do your measuring mark another and then you will have a reminder of what's going on that's it for this episode I just wanted to show you a dial caliper thanks for watching now get out of my shop